Okay, Paul here, and I've got on the bench today a Huntington fan. Um, <clears throat> it's a uh, cat number 75, type D10. Not much on the internet about it. I did a little bit of searching, but uh, it's a two-speed fan. with off, one and two. The switch is definitely bad. Uh, the customer brought me the fan. It was all apart. The armature was out. The bolts were out. Uh, the head wasn't on the stand. Wires are all disconnected. And, uh, and the bottom plate was on the base, but the base was not assembled. And, um, the customer said that it would, he had another guy look at it, but he said that it would get hot on high. It would run all right on low, and it would be hot on high. Well, I, um, like I said, I couldn't find any information on the Internet. And this is mostly a demo for the owner so that he can see what's going on. But I I connected um, some alligator clips to the three head wires to kind of get an idea of what was going on there. And I la labeled them one, two, and three so that the way they lay here, one, two, and three. Right now, I got my own meter across one and two, and it's saying 47.7. It said 58 point something yesterday, but that doesn't really matter. These are yesterday's readings. So, you know, you turn it, it's going to change a little bit, and I did uh, play with it a little bit. So, anyway, um, and then one and three, if I connect this... Uh, to the third alligator clip here. Let me get that out from under there. And one and three, we got 40.8. Yesterday, uh, it's hard to see with the lights on here. Yesterday I had 41.8. So the same thing, 40.8. So around 41, 58, 41. And I got 17.6 yesterday across two and three. So if we take this off one and put it on two, we're now getting hmm, got a bad connection there. There we go. 17.4. Yesterday I had 17.6. So. I said, this is still moving around on that one. Uh, let me see if I can get a better connection. Okay, 17.3, 17.4, somewhere around there. Actually, I don't think that one's on good. There we go. 17.5, that one was a little loose. All right. Um, so, yesterday I had 17.6. It, it doesn't matter. They, they're all within range of where they were. Um, I assembled the fan. I didn't oil it or anything. The customer said he had done all that, but I know I need to check it out because when I go to turn it, you see, it doesn't want to spin. So he had taken the cap off and all, and I'm sure there's just some adjustments that got to be made to loosen it up. But I wanted him to see what was going on. So actually, um, let me put a piece of paper on there. I'm going to pause the video a second. Okay, so I put a piece of paper on the fan so you can see it turning. And I've got this set on one and three, which would be high. And if I t and the, fa the uh, fan is rated at 0.7 amps, 110 to 120 volts at 0.7 amps, so 700 milliamps. So if I turn on my variac here, Bring up the voltage, say around 50. Um, okay, around 50 volts or so right there. And if we look at the current, it's 0.27, so about 0.3, so we're fine. So if I bring the voltage up to say 60, uh, well, I'm at 74 there, drawing 0.42. So there's no problem with current draw. It's not drawing too much power, which is good. Of course, it's not turning even with 74 volts. So if I raise the voltage up and I'm bringing it up slowly, and remember this is high speed, it should already be spinning. I'm at a little over 
90 volts. I'm going to bring it up. A little over 100, nothing. Bring it up. I'm at 112. 115. It's drawing 71 milliamps, and it just started spinning, so that's dropping down. Okay, so this is high. And you hear it slowly picking up speed some. Having a little trouble running. The voltage is 117. Let me bring it up to 120. Okay, so now we're at 120 volts, 121. It's drawing 0.56. So it's running cool. It's not getting hot. And that's high speed. Okay, now of course it's not lubricated right. It's not adjusted right. So it's not going to go much faster. But that's high speed. And there's no problem with it. Now if I go to low speed, which is 1 and 2. So we'll disconnect this here. And we'll put this on two. That's low speed. So you see the fan is working. It's running. It's not running as fast as it should, but it's running and it's not drawing any current more than it's supposed to. Well, 0.38, that's because it's on low. So it's drawing less power. It's going through more inductive reactance to the coil, so more resistance to the coil. And so I know that that's low, and I know the other speed is high. And if I put it back on high, and I don't want to do that with the voltage all the way up, it's just a lot of sparking over here, because I am suicide connected here on a line cord. But let's just put it back on high. Yeah, sorry about that. Get it back on high, bring the voltage back up. And it's already turning now at 110. And we're drawing 0.55 at 110. Go up to 120. Oh, it's a little bit too high. Let's back it down. Okay, about 120. We're drawing 0.53. So the motor's running really efficient. There's nothing wrong with the coil not going to get hot at 0.53 watts. That ain't enough heat dissipation. So the stator seems to be fine. The motor seems to be fine. Um, it's just a matter of getting it adjusted. I'll have to take this cap off. I should be able to spin it. The paper's about to fall off because it's coming. I didn't want to stick it too permanently on there. I just wanted you to be able to see it turning. So the next thing is, now that I know how the wires go, um, the next thing is just simply getting a fan to spin without any power at all so that it's loose and turning freely. And once I get that going, these RPMs should go up. Um, but that's fine. No heat at all. It's cool as can be. And these should run a little bit warm. This fan is cool as can be. And I don't know if it'll bother oscillating. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, but I can't let it oscillate because it'll hit my wires. All right. Yeah, it's oscillating. So that's good. I just, it's disconnected, but it was actually oscillating. And some scrapes there where somebody gripped it with some pliers, but we'll take care of getting it as gently as we can when we put it back together. But um, I'm going to work on trying to get this going a little smoother. See, it's doing fine on high, 0.51 amps. So it's drawing instead of 0.75, which is what it's rated at. Yeah, 0.7, not 0.75, 0.7 amps. And we're running at 0.51 amps. So it's running really cool. With the motor as hard to turn as it is, this should be higher uh, wattage, not lower wattage. Uh, higher current, so that would be higher wattage. Actually, what are we drawing? We're drawing 40 watts. And so it's not doing bad at all. It's nice and cool. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it. I think what happened is it's, it's a 
just a smidgen warm, nothing to it. I think what happened is somebody had connected it to wires two and three, which is not used. That's just the difference between these. So you need all three wires. You need one and two and one and three. You don't need two and three. That's just what's left because what you have is, a, and I kind of roughly drew it here. It's kind of a bad drawing. I apologize for that. But you have a coil. It goes all the way around. In this case, it goes all the way around to um, one and two, which is low. What they do is they put a tap in the coil so that if you put it on three, one and three, which is high, the, part, the current only goes all the way over to there. It doesn't have to go through the whole coil, which cuts down the resistance. It runs from there to there and straight down, shorting out part of this coil that it's not using. It's not shorting out, it's cutting it out of the circuit. So that part of the coil is no longer being used, drops the resistance down from, the high, from low to high because you're only using part. Well, this tail that's not being used is this. And the problem is that's just there to go from third to second or from actually high to low, high to low. You can think of it that way. So it goes from high to low. You don't want to go across that. This is the side that the power has to go through the whole coil. And so that's why it was getting hot. They were running 120 volts through 17 ohms. And you can bet that's going to draw some power there. That would be almost a dead short across their line cord. So they were probably drawing, I don't know, upwards of 300, 200. Well, judging by the numbers, it's about a factor of three. And we're doing 50, so maybe a couple hundred watts. Well, yeah, that would get really dang hot. So we're fine. We got it taken care of. We just got to get the, fan, the motor running better. Okay, I got this fan running a lot better. Um, adjusted it and got it a little oil in it and got it adjusted so now when i turn it it turns you know turning okay it's not bad and if i bring my vo uh, voltage up now i'm on the uh one and three which is i'm on high but if i bring my voltage up till it starts turning and i'll stop it once it starts turning Okay, there we go. So it's turning right there. And my voltage is 57 volts. 57 volts and it's turning. So of course if I bring it and the current of draw at 57 is only 0.3 because it's just barely turning. So if I bring my voltage up now, you see it pick up as I bring it up. And right now I'm at 90, I'm at 100. And you can hear it, it's running smooth. That's 118.6 volts. 118.5. So it's running great. Uh, bring it up to 120. Uh, line coming, uh, 121 right there. And it's running at the same speed because that's the speed of the motor. Plenty of torque. It's running fine. And so on low, let's look at that. So we disconnect this one and we use one in two. Low. Maybe I'm just switching the wires basically. Now we'll bring it up again, same way till it starts turning. And it'll take a little more voltage to kick it off on low than on high. But there we go. So at 76.7, .7, it starts running on low. And of course, it takes more voltage because it's a shorter coil. We're cutting out part of the coil on low. So there's less inductive reactance between the, um, uh, uh, the armature. There's less uh, 
reactions between the armature and the stator unless we end up the reactants in the uh, uh, stator, of course, because we're using part of the coil. So if I bring it up, that's about 107. Bring it up here, getting faster. I'm at 118. And that's right there, 120. 120 and it's running fine. Plenty, again, plenty of talk. So, uh, and she is affixed. The problem now is the switch, and then I got to connect the head wires. Um, also, the head wires with the pieces of wires that were left are missing their insulation all over the place. So there was a danger of them uh, shorting together or shorting against the metal case, and that would be a real bad thing. So what I did is temporarily while I was testing, I just put some black electric tape on there really loose so I can just cut off. But I'll uh, connect the head wires and use shrink wrap and make sure they're insulated well. Of course, run them back through the hole here. I just ran them through there because it was an com easy, convenient spot to, to deal with. Um, so I have to pull the armature out again, but I got this lined up correctly and that made a big difference. And while I got it apart, I'll check the oil and grease level on the back bearing and make sure that it's spinning okay. It might even spin a little faster, but it's running cool. You know, they get a little warm. You're drawing 70 watts at peak. And 70 watts of power is a lot of power to dissipate as, it dissipates as this heat. Uh, all motors do. Some motors are more efficient than others. Um, so, uh, you know, that's going to produce some heat. But the, the better that this turns, the less amount of wattage it draws, which you've seen. And the less amount of wattage it draws, the less amount of wattage it has to dissipate as heat. So that's pretty good. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, uh, please give a thumbs up. I appreciate the support, as I said before. And um, we'll make a final demo once I get it all back together and get a new switch in there because the switch is shot. I don't think it can be fixed. Yeah, it's, it's really shot. Unfortunately, these switches are hard to come by. Uh, the new switches... Uh, not as nice looking and they don't line up you know they won't really line up in fact the way they have they have off in the middle and then low and high so they won't line up unless i can find a used one from this era which i'll try to do i gotta talk to the customer about that but right now i just wanted to get it working and get it rewired and uh, get it optimized and then we'll deal with the switch Again, thanks for watching. Hope you found the video useful. And uh, comment any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, I got the head wire connected. Um, <clears throat> the switch is bad. The switch is definitely bad. So I gotta figure out what to do about that. We'll have to find one. But in the meantime, um, I got the uh, head wire connected directly to the motor. It's on high. I'm at 117 and a half volts. It's oscillating. Uh, when they put the head wire in, they didn't make it long enough, and I didn't know that until I went to connect it at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to splice in, but it's just barely long enough for it to oscillate. If it needed any more wire, there's just none there. Normally when you do a head wire, you make one coil in the bottom, and that way you got plenty of head wire for maintenance down the road. But rather than ordering a head wire, I just made do with what was there because uh, the customer said, you know, no restore, just re just uh, get it working. Well, it's working. It's pretty quiet. It's got plenty of talk. And that's high speed. And we're at 117.7 volts or 117.5. It's going to fluctuate back and forth. That's normal. 
Um, so 117, 118 volts, and it's drawing 48 um, amps. So that's pretty good. That's well under what it should be, and it's at 36 watts. Um, and the efficiency is not bad, 56 uh, volt amps of uh, efficiency. So 35 watts, doing good well within tolerance you know at startup it would go like if i had plugged this in 120 and flipped the switch on and it had a switch it would jump up to about 0.7 and then settle down to where it is now which is why they rate them at 0.7 because that's the peak to get it going um but it's doing fine even at 117 volts if i bring it up to 120 Okay, we're roughly about 120 there. It's doing fine. 0.48, so 0.5 amps. It's rated 0.7 max, so, well, that's fine. And it's 37 watts. So the fan is doing good. It's pretty quiet. I went ahead and greased it. There was no grease in the grease box. Uh, so I put some grease in there. I didn't disassemble it. I just shot it in through where the armature shaft goes, which is sufficient to grease a small motor like this. So it's well greased, and um, case is nice and snug, so it's balanced. And the longer it runs, the uh, more it'll break itself in. I did put a couple drops of oil in there to oil the armature. And so that's all going. Um, might drop a couple drops of oil in here, and I probably could use a little grease, but it seems okay. It's doing fine, so it was really loose and spinny, so it wasn't binding or anything. Um, and let's see, one other thing we can check is tilting it. Oh, is it a little bit looser? Okay, that's all the way back. And this is down, and it'll go down a little, probably a little. No, I guess that's it. So, no banging of the armature. It's staying right where it is. That's a good sign. So we'll just lock it there. So the next thing is to get this switch. Get a switch, put it in there so we can use high and low, and uh, the fan is running. So, again, thanks for watching the video. I decided to go ahead and get this far, so I added a little bit to it than where I was a while ago. Thank you. So, that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a, th a thumbs up and subscribing. That helps me keep these videos going, and I truly appreciate your support. Thank you.